Hi, Trevor Tindai here. So today I'm making another video about my commuter bike. I'm about to fit mud guards on there simply because I'm trying to save the bike. It's never been this filthy for as long as I've had the bike. Uh, let me shine some light on it actually. Here we go. <clears throat> so if you look at the bike, the state of it, it is covered in filth, flying filth. And it's never been this dirty. I mean, I keep my bikes clean, but this is unreal. It's been snowing outside. Um, the roads are wet. It was raining last week. Um, and every time that I wash the bike, it will just get destroyed the following day. Um, so I decided mud guards are the way forward. Even this weekend, I took this bad boy out and I'm definitely not fitting mud guards on this. Um, this is staying as it is and I will just be checking the weather to make sure that the weather is awesome. I'm a bit disappointed because the light that I got as a replacement from the beam has come back. Uh, it got wet at the weekend and it stopped working. So it turns out the beam, the Lucia from the beam, that light is not waterproof. Um, I've had two lights and every time I've gone out when it's wet weather, they've been destroyed. Hang on, let me see if I can get the focus on this right. Here we go, that's better. Now we can see the dirt on this bike properly. Okay, so look at the state of this bike that is disgusting so yeah i've decided mud guards are the way forward because i want to save the bike i don't want to get all the salt and stuff like that off the road onto my components because it's literally destroying my components if you if you look because my bikes are kept indoors you can see the cassette is starting to corrode that's because of the salt off the road so they're, they're gritting the roads with that salt. It's going on my bike. If I kept it outside, it wouldn't rust, but I keep it indoors. So when I bring it indoors, even when I get to work, I don't leave it outside. I take it into the stores in, at work, which has got a heater in there. And because I bring it indoors, this is what happens. It starts to corrode my components. So hopefully with this, fitting the mud guards, it's going to stop the water and the gunk splashing all over the bike and hopefully saving my bike and making it last that little bit longer. I mean... Look in there. Oh my God, look at that. Ugh, that is horrible. I am officially an old man. I mean, this is what my road bike is going to look like once I'm done. And I actually like, <laughs> I actually like this look. Um, so here I am unboxing or unpackaging the um, SKS race blade mud, mud guards. Um, and that's the front one. Uh, to be fair, uh, I've been riding with the mud guards on for two straight days now. And it's been, I mean, it snowed the first morning that I went into work and the evening when I was coming back from work, it was snowing. And then today was completely dry. It snowed a little bit in the morning when I left, um, but it's been absolutely dry. The roads have been, the conditions have been absolutely perfect. So here's the race blades. I like the black, I like the shine. These are the easiest um, mud guards you, you'll be able to fit on a, um, what's it called? On a rim brake bike. So if you've got calipers, um, sorry, if you've got um, disc brakes, these are not ideal for your bike. These are more for um, rim brake bikes. So here, um, what I'm doing is I'm just lining this up. I decided that if I'm going to be fitting the uh, mud guards on here, um, one thing I need to do is also uh, do a quick service. I needed new brake pads um, and I got the Swiss Stop brake pads, the blue ones. Um, I use Swiss Stop, the black, blue, doesn't really matter. But uh, this time around I've got the, the blue ones, I had the black ones before. Um, so I'm just changing my, my brake pads for the winter because the other ones were pretty badly worn. I'm not going to show you how to change brake pads. Um, it's just a, a, a simple Allen um, screw and then the brake pad slides out and that's what I'm doing before I do the mud guards. 
Okay, so here I'm just removing the little screw um, that's holding the um, brake pad in. Um, and then once you've taken that screw out, the um, actual brake pad itself slides out. It only comes out one way. So if it slides towards the back of the bike um, because when you're braking, otherwise if it was going forwards and you're braking where you're, the way your wheel's turning, it would push the brake pad out. So it's got a little catch on the front of it which stops it from pulling from pushing out that way. So it only pushes out one way. So you've got to look at your brake pad where it's round and smoothed over. It that's not the side. It's it's it should be flat um, and open at the back, and then you should be able to slide it that way. You can use a screwdriver. You can use your hands depending on how tight is in it's in there. They're pretty tight in it, so you might need to use like a screwdriver or something just to push it out. Um, and then once once I've done that, I then put the um, race blade on. And what, what it is, you just take your through axle off. You get clips that come that push into the actual race blade itself um, with, with a step on it so that it misses your um, your through axle, what's it called, um, nut and stuff like that, that screws in so it doesn't affect it or anything like that. And then once you've got the, the blade on there, the way I've done it, I put the blade on first and then I loosened the brake caliper, took it off, Put the clips on which then hold the uh, mud guards in place both the rear one and the so it comes in two halves you get you get the first section that goes behind the fork and you get a smaller section that goes in front of the fork if you look up you can see that little sort of l shape um, where i'm about to clip into there they just slot into that once you've got it fixed on a brake caliper you just push that on so you've got to completely take the brake caliper off put the two brackets in place and then screw the brake, brake caliper back on um, this was uh, first go I've just put them on didn't really have to make any adjustments I spun it around to see if anything was rubbing there was no rubbing so I proceed to do the rear mud guard and the rear brake um, brake pad change as well uh, so here I'm just showing you the clips that I was talking about they just push into there they slot in simply and then once you push them in they'll click into place and once you hear that click you're good to go um, like I said these are the easiest mud guards to install you don't need to be a bike mechanic i'm not a bike mechanic i've got no training whatsoever it's all trial and error for me i'm learning as i go so what i noticed with the um the rear mud guard you have the chain to consider when you're getting your your clips in place you've got to make sure you're on the right side of the chain you've got to make sure that because um, with the front you can let the mud guard drop and hang uh, below just like I've done there so at the moment I'm not holding onto the mud guard the mud guard is at the bottom of the wheel you see it there I'm gonna I'm gonna pull it up in a minute um, so you gotta make sure that you're actually on the right side of the chain because when you swing it round now to put it into the clip you will find that it might clash with the chain so you just need to make sure you're on the right side of the chain the chains already on the uh, cassette and then you can continue to do whatever so with the brackets that you get they're all different lengths you get slightly longer ones and you get shorter ones depending on the type of bike that you have you might need a longer bracket or a shorter one so i'm just checking to see which one would be ideal for my bike in this instance the short one wasn't ideal i had to use the slightly longer one um and that's what i did basically so i went i went for the for the longer one um, just to, just so I can be able to get the Allen key in there to tighten it. If I'd have used the short one, I wouldn't have been able to get the Allen key in there to tighten the brake caliper back onto the frame of the bike. So that's the reason why I went with the slightly longer bracket so I can get the Allen key in there and be able to screw it on. Um, so I checked all of that before putting it on. It's just, a, like I said, it's sometimes you just got to look at it, assess it, and then you, you kind of work it out as you go along. It, there's no point in me zooming in so you can see exactly what I'm doing. It's, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's very easy to do. Uh, if you've got a bike stand, it makes it a world, a, a whole world easier. Um, so yeah, uh, bike stand, you need one because to wash your bike, to work on your bike, you need a bike stand. You need to be standing upright like I'm doing there. It's comfortable, I can work on it. I've been doing this for about 40 minutes now and I'm really comfortable. The only reason why I've been doing it for 40 minutes because I was messing around, talking to to to, um, uh, to people in the house. Um, so yeah, that's why it's taking me longer. Otherwise it would take me a, a lot quicker. 
uh, it would have been a lot quicker than than 40 minutes because it's very very simple also the fact that i had to change the um the brake pads as well i had an issue with one of the uh, the screws it wouldn't it sort of rounded off um as i was trying to get it off um so i had to use pliers to get it off and stuff like that so that's why it's took, taking me longer as well so i was doing the brake pads as well um the rear one needed some adjustment but it wasn't really the raised blade that needed adjustment when i took the brake caliper off and i put it back on it's kind of skewered slightly it's not it's not sitting flush anymore and basically what was happening is when i was turning the wheel it it was literally um gripping on one side so it was breaking so the wheel wasn't turning so i thought it was the mud guard that was rubbing but it wasn't a mud guard it's actually the uh brake brake pad that was rubbing on onto the wheel making it stop as you can see that i'm trying to spin it and it's not really spinning and i'm trying to figure out what's going on it, it sounds like it's a, it's the um and then i figured it out that it was the brake pads that were rubbing and then when i adjusted the caliper and made sure that it was square the uh, wheel was then turning freely everything was was good nothing was really rubbing i just had to make some minor adjustments so I, i've got um sort of the same amount of clearance all the way around the mud guard but um, like i said these are the easiest mud guards you could ever fit um, there wasn't a lot of tampering to do with them they just went straight onto the bike very easy self-explanatory pretty straightforward um, I actually really enjoyed doing this and I'm looking forward to actually bad weather <laughs> just so I can see how good they are um, I mean not not yet I'm not really looking for it now because it's absolutely freezing outside the last thing we want is for it to rain um, so yeah I'm enjoying the, the, the cold and dry weather I don't mind it being cold and dry it's only when it's cold and wet that's when it's, it's, it's horrible so you can see I'm just checking there I'm spinning the wheel I'm having a look is it the brake caliper is the brake caliper it's rubbing ever so slightly because the wheel's stopping really quickly so i'll make some more adjustments i start Because I've been messing around with the bike, um, doing the brake pads, the, taking the chain on and off, um, there's a few marks on the bike and I just use, um, I, I think I've mentioned, mentioned this before, I use the GT um, to get the marks off the bike, especially grease and, and stuff like that, marks on there, even, even the marks from the, the brake pads and stuff like that, that gets it off nicely, it gives the bike a nice little shine um so yeah even after i wash my bikes i always do this this is this is this is something that i do all the time with my bikes um it gives them that nice little shine and that little thin veneer of protection so yeah if you ever need to get marks off your bike this is how you do it yeah gt85 lovely thank you for watching if you're new to my channel go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you enjoy this video go ahead and hit the like button and if you've got any questions, put them in the comment section. If you've got any content that you'd like to see, put it in the comment section. There you go. Look at that beauty. Look at her. I look like a proper granddad on this bike now. Um, so, yeah, when I go past you, yeah, remember, you got left by a granddad, yeah? <laughs>